Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmosso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly for pricing. Email tmosso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we are discussing the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore Chronograph. This is the 25721 in titanium, mid-2000s. You can see on the reverse side, this watch is an F-Series. A 42mm Royal Oak Offshore with fully integrated bracelet. Now, 42 millimeters is the diameter. The thickness is 14.2 millimeters. The case, if we just measure the case's distance across the wrist, 54.1 millimeters. And then if we measure the intermediate lengths, these little plots that connect the bracelet to the case, the total distance across the wrist as I measure it is 57.8 millimeters, which means this is a large watch. And on the bracelet, there is a rigidity to it that causes it to wear larger than a comparable 25770, which would be a Royal Oak Offshore 42 from the period on a strap. Now, taking a look right here, it actually fits well on my wrist of 16 centimeters, but this is pretty much the limit. I wouldn't go any smaller, and I'll show you why. Although the bracelet does flare out a bit on each side, which is to say it doesn't look like the lugs are overlapping the edge of my wrist. They're right out to the edge. This is borderline. But now, if your wrist is a lot smaller than mine, you got to deal with this. The fact that I can't pull the bracelet straight down out of the lugs. Let me show you an example of a watch where you can do that. Here's an Omega Speedmaster. You see how it can pull the bracelet straight down? That means that the total distance across the wrist is just the lug to lug. Whereas here, I've got to deal with that full near 58 millimeter span across the wrist, so 16 centimeter circumference wrists and larger. Now, most Royal Oak Offshores, especially nowadays, don't include bracelets. When Emmanuel Get designed the original in 1993, he designed it with and without the bracelet. But of course, on the bracelet, it looks more directly like a modernization of Gerald Genta's original 1972 Royal Oak 5402. So with the integration of case and lugs and bracelet, this one preserves more of the Genta original while keeping Get's basic notion of a more modern, larger, and more durable Royal Oak. And of course, the bracelet, like the case, is lovely and hand-finished in grade 5 titanium, you know, because you can polish grade 5, you can't polish the grade 2 stuff. So not only is this hypoallergenic, it's both more scratch-resistant and lighter than steel. Nicely made, still building these things the right way. AP fixing the bracelet to the case using screws and bars, not spring bars. And that continues in the assembly of the bracelet, which you can see is held together using screws for removable links, no pins and sleeves there. There is a taper down from the lugs all the way to the clasp itself. Here you can see it's a double deployant clasp. And the clasp itself is stainless steel, so I want to be clear about that. Some people might be confused. The clasp body, because it's a relatively thin gauge metal, it is made of stainless steel. Now, when I close the clasp, you can see that there are spring-loaded pin snaps in here to keep all of this tight and sharp. Uh, there is a clamshell lock. And again, because those spring-loaded pin snaps, the system doesn't wear down as much as if it were a simple friction fit system. So you listen, it snaps, it snaps. Very crisp, well-preserved. Here's the reference here, just so you can believe me, this is a titanium watch. Rolling back to the case, very similar to a Royal Oak, only more so, as we have that hand finishing, the subtlety of polish and of satin, the character lines that run uninterrupted from component to component. Of course, on the offshores, the bezel gasket becomes a more prominent design feature of the watch, and here we have the nitrile covers for the chronograph pushers as well as the shoulder of the crown. Note, it is hexagonal, and so are the steel bolts in the bezel. Now, they are bolts. That's how they can be aligned all the way around like this. So there are nuts on the underside inside the case. That's how that alignment is possible. Now you can see here the bolts themselves are actually somewhat proud of the bezel, which means this watch has been refinished over the years. And this is just one of those condition notes that I like to highlight when I'm showing a watch like this. At some point in the future, the bezel would be replaced at Audemars Piguet if the owner elected to do so. Though you can wear it and it is perfectly watertight and quite presentable as you see it here. Now the rounded octagon was based on a vintage diving helmet. That's where Gerald Genta actually got the design. There's a popular misconception. I'm not sure I'd call it an urban legend because it does spawn from many different quarters, not all of them in cities, but there's this urban legend that this is the porthole shape of a Royal Navy battleship. Considering 
the most famous vessel to bear the name Royal Oak was blown up with tremendous loss of life. That should tell you all you need to know about that myth. So this is a vintage diving helmet. That's where that comes from. The dial, mega tapisserie, and a tachymeter scale is the Reho outboard. The tachymeter is used to gauge the speed of something moving fairly fast, generally over a kilometer. So the example commonly given is a race car over a kilometer. Now we also have applied and polished metallic numerals, baton style hands. Of course, we're well into the era of super luminova at Audemars Piguet. So this dial is fully luminescent. We have sunken silver sub-registers that internally feature a concentric pattern. And then we have a sunken date, which is how most Royal Oak offshores historically displayed the date, because you have a Dubois de Praz vertical clutch chronograph module, the 2840, on top of a Audemars Piguet 2326 base, which is a JLC 8. 99. So when I pull the crown, I activate hacking seconds. There is also a quick set system courtesy of the JLC base. And the JLC base is a unidirectional automatic winder with a free sprung balance, a 4 hertz beat rate, 50 pivot joules when you combine the module and the base. There's a 38 hour power reserve, and because of the free sprung balance, it's a little bit tougher than the original 22. 26, which was 889 based, that was featured on the original Royal Oak offshore chronographs. The Dubois de Praz chronograph module is vertical clutch, so when you start the chronograph, there's no jump or stagger to it. It's very smooth. And then all of this with a screw down crown is 100 meters water resistant. So reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.